In response to do-nothing House Republicans wanting to cultishly rename a Washington, D.C. airport after Donald Trump, House Democrats have responded with an alternative proposal, and it's hilarious. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bell before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, this is a lot of fun. This is a good, fun Friday story. So again, yesterday I mentioned, and we'll play some clips to remind you, uh, Republicans who have had the majority in the House of Representatives since 2023 have done absolutely nothing with that majority except investigate President Biden in a failed sham impeachment inquiry, but they don't even have the votes to continue. It was just an abject failure. Also, if you look at the number of bills passed, let alone bills passed into law, it is the least productive version of Congress since the Great Depression. All of that falls squarely on the shoulders of the House Republican Conference. But then they finally got together. They're like, you know what? We got to do something. Let's pass a bill. It's an election year. Let's deliver for our constituents. And what they proposed was to name the Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C., Virginia, after their cult leader, Donald Trump. In response, Jerry Connolly, Jared Moskowitz, and John Garamendi, two House Democrats, proposed an alternative piece of legislation. Connolly, Moskowitz, and Garamendi introduced Bill to rename federal prison in Miami after Donald Trump. Today, this is the press release. Today, Connolly, Moskowitz, and Garamendi introduced legislation to change the name of the federal prison in Miami, Florida, to the Donald J. Trump Federal Correctional Institution. The legislation follows the introduction of a Republican-led bill to rename the Washington Dulles International Airport after the former president. So, quote, when our Republican colleagues introduced their bill to rename Dulles after Donald Trump, I said the more fitting option would be to rename a federal prison, said Connolly. I see no reason to wait. Donald Trump faces nearly 100 felony charges. He's been found liable of sexual abuse and subsequently for defaming the victim of that abuse. He's been fined hundreds of millions of dollars in a civil fraud case. It's only right that the closest federal prison to Mar-a-Lago should bear his name. I hope our Republican friends will join us in bestowing upon Donald J. Trump the only honor he truly deserves. Then this is Moskowitz. He says, everybody knows President Trump loves to write his name in gold letters on all his buildings, said Moskowitz. But he's never had his name on a federal building before. And as a public servant, I just want to help the former president. Help us make that dream a reality. Then Garamendi, Donald J. Trump is the first former president in U.S. history to be criminally indicted with 88 offenses in four criminal cases to date. MAGA Republicans have proven them themselves unwilling to solve real problems that face our country. I cannot think of a more fitting tribute to our former president, Donald J. Trump, than renaming the closest federal prison to Mar-a-Lago in his honor. As always, my Democratic colleagues and I remain willing to work with anyone on common sense solutions to real world problems. And sure enough, they have indeed introduced a bill to rename this federal prison after Donald Trump. Folks, this is glorious. This is the right kind of energy. Uh, they also went on Twitter, George Conway, who was married to Kellyanne Conway of Alternative Facts fame, uh, a Trump sycophant. Um, he posted this image of Trump Tower, which is the guard tower of a federal prison. Moskowitz, Congressman Moskowitz responded, what is this? A sender of rants must have at least eight times more gold. Now, all of this is in response again to Guy Reschenthaler and a number of other House Republicans introducing that bill. They're dead serious about it. They're super sycophantic. It's incredibly gross. You know, he says, in my lifetime, our nation has never been greater than under the leadership of President Donald J. Trump. As millions of domestic and international travelers fly through the airport, there's no better symbol of freedom, prosperity, and strength than hearing, welcome to Trump International Airport as they land on American soil. And then, of course, they posted a variety of lies trying to justify it. Then you also have Andy Ogles. I, I played this clip in the previous video. Um, seriously going on to Newsmax, and even the Newsmax hosts seem kind of bewildered by it. They don't find it very funny, which again leads me to believe that these Republicans are quite serious given all the other indicators that the whole thing is a cult. I want to remind you of some of this clip and some of Ogle's responses. Bill, stand a chance of passing? Well, you know, it, it's one of those, uh, you always swing for the fences, you never stop fighting. But look, you know, Donald Trump was a transformative president. The country was in a better place when he was president of the United States. The economy was better, the borders were more secure, and the world was safer. So it's time that we recognize that fact, regardless of whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, we were all better off under Donald Trump versus under this so-called 
Bidenomics. Yeah, Republicans are having a tough time in the House. Gallagher, mm -hmm. Buck, McCarthy, Santos, all gone. Um, so you don't really have, you've got a one vote margin. Is, right. Do you think this would even pass in the House if it went to the floor for a vote? Well, you know, there's there's one way to find out. Let's put it out there, baby, and let's go. I mean, you you, you, you don't fight. Uh, you don't stop fighting because the odds are tough. But I think it can pass. Now, look, I don't think the Senate would take it up, but uh, that's on them, not us. You know, we have an obligation to do our jobs, and part of that is to honor the former president. Folks, again, that part in particular, I mean, he said a bunch of lies. He was like, the, the country was in a better place under Donald Trump four years ago. Obviously, that's not true. The economy was in the toilet. It cratered under Donald Trump, even though he inherited a fantastic economy from President Obama. He drove it into the ground under, in under four years. Um, hundreds of thousands of people were dying from COVID due to a pandemic that he mismanaged. Um, things were terrible, right? So not only is he lying and engaging in revisionist history about the fact that things are just generally objectively better under President Biden. Then he says that creepy thing there at the end, which is part of our job as elected representatives is to honor the former president. Super gross stuff. This is what I mean. The president's the most powerful and important figure in American politics, there's no question. But number one, Donald Trump isn't president, okay? Number one. Number two, Congress doesn't work for the president, right? The president may be the leader, but he's not the boss of the Congress people. He's really not. He doesn't have the power to hire and fire Andy Ogles or anybody else, but they look at it as this weird top-down relationship Beyond even what we've seen in the past, like a cultish level of devotion, which again deserves nothing but contempt and disdain and mockery, which is why I'm glad that House Republicans are responding this way, or excuse me, House Democrats are responding this way. House Democrats are making fun of it. They're using it to mock and belittle and condescend and make fun of Trump too. That's the sort of energy. Don't take it seriously. Use it when and where possible to radicalize Democrats to show Republican constituents and people who are moderate and independent who might be inclined to vote Republican or at least entertaining the option. Listen, this is what they're seriously trying to do. This do nothing Republican Congress, which has gotten nothing done compared to when Democrats were in charge because they're objectively superior governing than Republicans. And the one thing that they can get together on, mobilize on, is trying to rename an airport after their cult leader. They're dead serious about it. They're so serious. They are offending Newsmax hosts who are like, listen, you don't have the margins for this. This is really stupid. You're driving people away. This should carry electoral consequences, and Democrats should work overtime, again, to mock and belittle and disdain and just be mean. Bring that mean girl energy to these loser Republicans and then make them pay a price for it at the ballot box in November. That's what I hope happens. And I also hope that Moskowitz and Connolly and Garamendi also hold press conferences for this. This would be a lot of fun. Use this as an opportunity to further embarrass Republicans because clearly they don't realize it. They're embarrassing themselves in front of God and country. Let me know what you think in the comments.